Reasons you peek early, or FP early, is one of the two hardest tricks in Banjo-Kazooie any percent no RBA speedruns, along with the Door of Grunty or Dog Skip. This trick is only possible thanks to the discovery of Furnace Fun moves, or FFM, which allows us to use Beak Bomb prior to entering Freeze Easy Peak. I'll be going over my setup, which I came up with by doing this clip over and over and over and over and over again, until it became somewhat reliable. I then worked backwards to figure out what exactly it was that I was doing. My take on this setup is quite different from the current setup that most people are using. It's worth noting that the setup is specifically for the North American or NTSC N64 version of the game, but it should also work with the Xbox 360 version. However, it probably won't work with the PAL or European N64 version of the game uh, because movement is quite different in that version due to the frame rate being lower. The 8-Bit Beast has a video on the PAL setup, which I'll link in the description. To start, I'll show you guys a brief overview of the clip and then go into depth into explaining my setup. Start in this part of the layer and shoot three eggs right away to break the cobweb that's normally over the flight pad. Unfortunately on this file, I had already destroyed the cobweb. We killed this enemy in order to ensure it that he doesn't knock us out of flight as we're trying to set this up or practice this. It's actually faster to go behind the advent calendar at this part, but I go in front because it's a bad habit. We make our way over to the flight pad with the running shoes. Don't cancel the shoes, just enter flight. We lower ourselves down onto the slope here, kind of by the corner. And then once we're in the right position, we beak bomb out of bounds while staying in flight. Beak bomb over towards Freeze Easy Peak. And then either fly in or beak bomb into Freeze Easy. So why are we able to clip at this spot? Most of the clips in this game have two key features. The first one is the geometry at which you, you clip at. If we look at this slope, right here at the corner is near where we clip. And you'll notice that we have a slope going down and meeting with a flat floor. This is very weak geometry in this game and allows us to clip through. The fact that we have beak bomb means that we're able to gain enough velocity that we're able to clear the geometry and avoid any collision detection that the game might have. Thanks to Beak Bomb, it also means that we're in flight, and instead of just plummeting into the void, we're actually able to fly around out of bounds. I'm now going to switch over to Stivity Bobo's world record run or to illustrate what the previous setup was like. We notice that he enters flight and does three flaps to turn around and then four flaps towards the door and then just kind of positions himself into this corner and beak bombs. This setup is clearly quicker than my setup. However, there's many variables that you're trying to control at once. These variables include your X, Y, and Z position, your rotation, both left and right, and also your rotation forward and backwards. Uh, all these have to be correct in order for this clip to, to work, which can make it very difficult. This setup is especially hard due to the fact that you're trying to use the initial flight pattern in order to set it up. Flying is especially difficult for new people since you're basically floating in 3D space. And trying to do exact inputs during this time is not the most accurate way I'll now go over my setup and how I think of this clip. You'll notice that I enter flight in the opposite direction of Stiv. That's because this initial flying part is not very important. Um, you can enter it either direction, any direction, as long as you're able to land on a very specific part of the slope. On the slope, we have two polygon edges. We have this upper polygon edge, which I'm highlighting in gray. We have a lower polygon edge, which I'm going to highlight in magenta. 
Um, we also have very good visual cues of where we are on this ledge, thanks to these dark textures on this wall. I'm highlighting in yellow. As long as we're able to get onto the upper polygon edge, slightly to the left of the black texture, we're able to actually reliably set up this trick. And it doesn't matter how it is that we fly to this point. At this point, Banjo actually hooks onto the ledge or latches onto the ledge. And you can actually fly on this upper polygon edge indefinitely if you maintain the right angle. You'll notice on my N64 controller that my control stick is not centered. It's slightly back, and that's just because A, I lowered myself onto here, so I was holding back, and B, it's so I can stay at that height on the ledge and position my angle. So notice that I'm not perpendicular to this upper ledge. Instead, I'm at about a 45 degree angle. Anything between 20 and 45 is fine for this setup. If you're too perpendicular, a lot of times you will tumble as you clip out of bounds, and then you'll void out because of that, and you'll have to do the entire setup over again. You'll notice through this entire process, I hold further and further back on the control stick. This is because what we're actually trying to do is we're trying to slide down this upper slope until we're close enough to this dark texture, let's say about here, um, where we want to hold even further back in order to fall off the slope. This is because we don't actually clip on the upper part of the ledge, we actually clip on the lower part of the ledge where the wall meets the floor. Um, this is not totally obvious in this video, so I'm going to pull up another one where it is slightly more obvious. This is a video I had die the other night, but does a very good job of illustrating what this setup is. I'll slow the video down as we get closer to the ledge. Once again, we lower ourselves down slightly to the left of the black texture on the wall. Now let me slow it down to about half speed. You'll notice I position my angle, and then I start lowering myself down the edge, and right as I fall off that upper edge, I beak bomb. Let's see that one more time. Sliding down, falling off, beak bombing through the ground. This is the effect that we're going for. So once again to keep recap, we're aiming for about this position on the upper part of the slope. If we feel like we need more time in order to set up our position correctly, we can aim higher up on that upper edge of the slope. After we're on the slope, we want to position ourselves so we're facing about 45 degrees off being perpendicular from the wall. We then want to hold back on our control stick so that we slide further and further down the wall, about in the middle of the two black textures. We want to hold further and further back so that what ends up happening, we slide slightly further down, but it ultimately fall down um, to where we're no longer on the upper polygon, um, but we have not landed on the ground yet. And that is the point where we want to beak bomb. The setup is good for beginners because, as I said, there are less variables to control. Getting onto the ledge is actually very consistent. It's not as precise as I make it out to be. If you need more time for the setup, you can land higher up on the ledge. After landing, you just worry about one variable which is getting your left and right rotation correct. Uh, once you have that correct, you just pull straight back on the control stick slightly until you're on the right position on that upper ledge. And then you hold further and further back so that you slide off and can beak bomb through the ground. 
This removes X, Y, and Z positioning since you're controlling all that with how far back you're holding on the control stick. Thank you for watching. I hope that this setup makes this trick a little bit easier for you and that I can see you doing an 80% no RBA speedrun soon.